Could BMW be going hybrid with their M3 and M4? Hmm. And just when you thought the NSX was coming out this fall, think again. Lotus anties up on the Exige, and Lexus gives one hell of a new face to its LX SUV. Plus, it's Tuesday, which means everyone's favorite segment, doing it wrong. That's right. Hey, this is Fast Lane Daily, and I appreciate you going through this episode's journey with me, <laughs> Derek D. It's good to have you. On a quick sad note, remember Leonard Robinson, the guy who would dress up like Batman, drive around in a black Batmobile Gallardo and visit children's hospitals? Well, he was having engine trouble, stopped his car on a highway in Maryland, got out to check on the engine and was struck and killed by a car. He was on the fast lane side of the highway and it was dark out. Uh, you have to be so careful, especially at night when you stop your car and you get out. You wanna make sure you are away from traffic. So. Very unfortunate, our thoughts and prayers with his family, and uh, hopefully he'll be remembered for all the great stuff he did for those kids and everything, which Absolutely. was a really good cause. So, shame to report that. How do you segue from something like that into this? You just do it. Yep. So, all right. Just when I thought Lexus couldn't, they come in and totally outdo themselves. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is mainly your call, but Lexus literally just put the biggest spindle grill ever on its facelifted LX SUV. I mean, that's one hell of a facelift. Also, new LED headlights, fog lights, and LED running lamps. The rear bumper had some work done as well, and the tail lights have a sharper look. New are the LX 570's 20 and 21 inch alloy wheels, an upgraded infotainment system with a 12.3 inch display, a bigger 4.2 inch instrument cluster, and a standard panoramic view camera. For 2016, there's also a drive mode select head up, drive mode select, heads up display, LED ambit lighting, wireless charging, bigger 11.6 inch displays for the rear seat entertainment system, and an upgraded luxury package with heated and cooled rear seats. Yeah, I know, this story has been very listy. I do not like the profile view of this car though. Nah. The hood in the front is just like way elongatingly weird. Huh. Blah. Ugh. I don't dig it. Nope. The six-speed automatic has been replaced with an eight-speed one. Same 5.7 liter V8 making 383 horsepower and 403 pound-feet of... Torque. That's right. What's that sound, Erica? Roop. Hmm. Roop. Is there a dog in here? Let's see that one more time. Meow. Oh. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. In other news, it's been said that a face... <laughs> it's been said that uh, this facelift what am I saying? It there hasn't, hasn't happened. been a big face of this big since Mickey Rourke. Yikes. Yikes, yeah. Ugh. Yikes indeed. Ugh, got that one out. The torque sounds were throwing me off. I mean, it's hard to nail. I know. There it is. Lotus has a new special edition Exige called the 360 Cup, making 355 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Oh, oh I thought you were going to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's from a supercharged 3.5 liter V6. Zero says, hey, 60. How soon until we party? 3.8 seconds, 60 replies. <laughs> <laughs> and onto a top speed of 170 miles per hour. Sounds like a party to me. Its only transmission option is a six speed manual like a blouse. Both. Ting ting. Exterior tweaks include a stealth matte roof, motorsport red accents, and a metallic black, metallic gray, metallic silver, or metallic white paint job. I tell you though, I do dig the white with the black and the touches of red. Very good looking car, in my opinion. Also included are LED daytime running lights, 17 and 18 inch alloy wheels with Pirelli P0 Corsa tires, and some subtle interior trim updates. Besides the added power, the 360 Cup gets an adjustable suspension, an electric locking differential, and four different modes. Drive, sport, race, and off, and I'm assuming off is when you want to get a little crazy. Just have plenty of open space, okay? That's all I'm saying. The brakes are improved and there's a launch control system. Only 50 will be built and they will cost $98,000. Not cheap, but I'm sure very fun to drive. Very fun. Yes. 
All right, to say we've been waiting a long time for Acura's NSX successor would be a huge understatement. So like if here is statement, that would be like here. Right. You get what I'm saying? Well, guess what? We're gonna have to wait even longer. Pretty sure we were talking about the NSX successor like four years ago. Wait, do we have, Erica, do we have that clip available? Somewhere in here. We, ah, yes. And Acura has officially announced that there will be an NSX concept at the 2012 Detroit Auto Show next month. See, I told you. And I don't, I don't even think that's the first time I mentioned it. Uh -huh. You know, that, that was probably, probably the first time I mentioned about the NSX successor was probably five or six years ago. And yes, I still have that shirt. And I think I wore it not that long ago. Right. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't ashamed, I ain't no. scared. Anyway, after lots of concepts and lots of delays, Honda said the NSX will be delayed until next spring. Next spring. Mm. Yeah. It was set for production this fall as a 2016 model, but it's going to be a 2017 model now. Ugh. Honda blames the twin turbo V6 engine for the delay. Yeah, of course they do. Blame the engine, Honda. If a naturally aspirated motor like the 2013 Concepts had been used, it would have been on schedule. So whatever the reason, the NSX had better come out swinging in 2017 if it doesn't get delayed again, which, yeah. you know, judging from its past. You know, because the rest of the automotive world is on fire right now with vehicles just lathered in awesome sauce. You know, coming out of the gate strong with engines lately. Just drizzle it on. Yeah. All right, you BMW fans may call this sacrilegious, especially M fans. Looks like BMW executives have confirmed that the next generation M3 and M4 will be hybrids. <gasps> All right. Ugh. All right. Calm down. Relax. Drink some water. Put a cold towel on your neck. Okay. According to sources, a tweaked twin turbo. I always say that because I want to say twin turbo. Right. A tweaked twin power three liter turbo engine will be paired with an electric motor to make more power and torque than the current 425 horsepower unit. All right, now personally, I don't think I have a problem with that. It's not a surprise, guys. We all knew it's heading, we all know that it's heading that way. Don't act like you didn't. I see you. The gas-powered motor will control the rear wheels while the electric motor will motivate the front wheels. Yes, motivate them. There will also be curves, which of course is a uh, energy recovery system, along with an electric-only range of 20 miles. Some BMW employees are apparently not happy about the move to a hybrid setup because of the additional weight. But others say the addition of more carbon fiber panels will keep weight down. So you say tomato, I say tomato, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. We just don't know yet. Interesting, though. Very. We all know it's headed that way, though. You know, let's be honest, guys. All right. It's time to watch someone, quite simply, doing what, Erica? Doing it wrong. Psh. You're so right. Thanks. When you're right, you're right. I'm always right. You know? Whoop. This DIW is a quick one from Saudi Arabia. Okay, let's, uh, let's stop it right there. And let's analyze what we see in this, in this still. Okay, so we see a dash cam recording a truck with its bed in the absolute highest position it could be in, right? We also see a sign in the distance, a sign that cannot possibly be higher than that truck's bed. But Okay, we don't know yet. We haven't watched the rest. We also hear the person driving the dash cam car just laying on the horn to try and get the driver of the, tr the truck driver's attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, which from that distance and behind, they're probably not gonna hear. Let's see if it worked. Nope, zero chance. <laughs> Luckily, there weren't any cars driving under that sign at the same moment because that sign split quicker than an ice cream and a banana dessert. Nice. Yeah. The, uh, the driver was okay, although I don't think, I mean, because only the, the, the bed hit the sign, the sign fell, it didn't hit any cars, and where he was driving the truck was all right. Yeah. It was intact. So the driver was okay, although I don't think his job was after his boss saw what he did and was like, you're fired for doing it wrong. How do you not know that your bed is up like that? And how do you think you are gonna make it under, you know, overpasses and signs and all that stuff? That's gotta be, it's gotta be 
25 feet in the air. Novice. I mean, novice is right. Yep. Amateur. Amateur hour. What is this? Put the bed down. Right. Come on. Ugh. Doing it wrong, dude. So uh, you guys want to watch that again, the link's in the description. Okay? All right. Our FLD question of the day is, what do you think the real reason Honda put another hold on releasing the new Acura NSX? And for those of you amateurs or novices out there, maybe watching the show, Honda owns Acura. That's why I keep saying Honda and Acura. Oh, dad, you're saying Honda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, honestly, I feel like it's got to be something more than just that particular engine not being ready. I think they're seeing all these other companies coming out with all these cool new engines and engine technology and are like, damn, we can't hang yet. Nope. So, back to the drawing board, 2017 it is. Hashtag FLDQ of the D and uh, let us know what you guys think and you could send your own into Eric, you know? Tips at FastLaneDaily.com. That's true, thank you. And uh, that will end this Tuesday episode of Fast Lane Daily. I'm Derek D. And hey, if any of you guys will be at the Chicago and Earth, Wind and Fire concert tonight at the PNC Bank Arts Center in New Jersey, well, maybe I'll see you there. Hmm. Yep. <laughs>